Okay. Hi, I'm Cappy from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. And some of you have been following my English paper piecing um, journey, which has kind of been a surprising journey for me. I didn't know I was going to love English paper piecing as much as I do, but I absolutely do. And some of you have come along with me. And I don't profess to be a professional, but I love to share what I've learned and found along the way. And so um, I'm probably about three years now into doing English paper piecing. I did one big project that's been focused on several times through several of our videos. I did the Tula Nova project and loved it. We did an in-store class with that with the group and they were amazing ladies. We came out with some phenomenal quilts from that. Very diverse. We did a, one had a reproduction fabric, another did really modern fabric. So um, English paper piecing crosses across all types of fabric styles. Um, and the techniques are very basic and minimal supplies. So I think that's why English paper piecing has taken off. So let me show you where I'm at. So this is my, everything I need to do English paper piecing is in one bag. Um, this is a bag that I made years ago for, it's a buy any project, um, a place for everything 2.0. Now I, this is the original version that I'm working with. So the upgraded pattern has some changes in it that as I look at the new upgraded pattern, I'm probably gonna have to make my travel bag again because I see some zippers and things in places that this one doesn't have that I would love to have. But this is a great pattern if you are, um, if you're willing to kind of take a little bit of a challenge, I wouldn't say it's for the lighter heart, but Annie does an amazing job of offering videos to teach you how to make her bags. And so this would be a several, weekend project. You're not going to get it done overnight, but it's going to be well worth it. If you do English paper piecing or any kind of crafting, it's a good uh, a place for everything. I mean, just what it says, that's exactly what it is. So this is mine and it does really have a place for everything. It has flamingos because I'm like flamingo girl, but that's another conversation. So as you open it up, you can see there's zipper pockets here. I've got pockets here and here, and I'm going to go through this. I can even put my little rotating table in here, which is really nice. I can literally take this on an airplane with me and they don't go bananas over it. Um, probably the rotary cutter wouldn't fly um, just because it's a rotary cutter and I could probably make something else to do with that if I had to. Um, but everything else pretty much goes. I don't have, I don't really have any problem with it, especially when they see it in this format, they figure, what is this lady gonna do besides sew things together? So I'm pretty non-threatening. But anyway, that's what this bag is and I love it. it. It sits by my chair at home and I have literally everything I need for my English paper piecing. So what have I been doing? Some of you have been following me for a little while and you're like, well, Cappy, why haven't you been here? Well, here's my project. I'm going to a retreat in the fall and one of the things that happens is the at the retreat is um, the 25 guests that attend bring a little present for everybody. So I decided that everybody going needed a pin cushion. Now I've not stuffed these yet with the walnut shells and that was, I was gonna show you that this morning and I neglected to get the walnut shells. But anyway, we'll have to do another video on how to stuff these, okay? We'll just do a follow up video. But when you stuff them, you get this. You get this puffy little fun, I put walnut shells in them, and it's nice and firm. It holds my pins really well when I want to put safety pins. And I put a little loop on it so that I can put my binder clips on here. Um, so like I can put clips on it like that, because you know binder clips are just about second to pins now. And this just sits on my countertop like that with the pins in it. And if you've watched my previous videos, You've seen how to make the, how to assemble the hexagons to make this. And the fun part is the pattern it makes. See the pattern? That's the part that I've had so much fun with. So if you, if just so you know, you can go back and see Kathleen's English paper piecing, but you start out with, with these pieces like this. You wrap them around the papers, pick your pieces, and then you sew them together. And I can, there's a specific pattern you want to sew around all of this one and then go up each side and across and up each side and across and you catch this one as you go. And then when you sew them all together, you get this, but you leave one open and that's what you can see right here on this one. There's going to be one open somewhere. There it is right there. And that's where I put my um, little sieve in there. I've got a 
post with a little sieve and I just pour my um, walnut shells down inside of that. And then I close that up. I do a ladder stitch. I'm gonna show you how to do a ladder stitch, how to close it up. And that's how I make my pin cushions. And I've made 25 of these. So I'm gonna lay them out on the table because what happens, what's the fun part about these is the kaleidoscope pattern that you get. So you can see when I've cut these, I've been very specific about fussy cutting them so that they make, this side maybe is a little better, makes a design. It makes me think of kaleidoscopes. See how fun these are? That almost looks like one piece of pa fabric. Doesn't like you it? You can't even see the seams, it's so well matched. Uh, yeah, well, and that, there's a trick to that. I'm gonna show you a little bit of how we do that. But, um, and some of them are just random. Some of them I just decided I didn't really want them to have. Oh, this one I love. Look at the little guy in the middle. This one, there was no, I didn't really fussy cut this one because the design of the fabric didn't really lend that to that. But I wanted to use this particular fabric because the lady that designed this fabric is going to be at the retreat. And I thought potentially she might this one want this one because it's made from her fabric. Well, I'm seeing these girls in their fabrics and I'm wondering... Yeah. Who's going to get what? Who's going to get what? Mouse. I know. So, again, these, these allow me the chance to fussy kit. And I've just become obsessed with making these silly little pin cushions. I've had to make 25, and I think I've made almost 30. But there, there's your ladybugs. There's the ladybugs. And this is another one that's just random. So, here, we'll, let's let's get a system going here. This one's a, just a random one. Now, that designer is a huge English paper piece. Yes. Right? And then... You know, because I'm the flamingo oh, well, gal. Fun. Look at this one. It's and they're like flamingo, flamingo butts. It's like instead of Swan Lake, it's Flamingo, flamingo Lake. Flamingo Lake, yeah. And then stripes do a fun thing too when you oh, sew them together. Fun. Isn't that fun? And then paisleys kind of do the best because you get a repeating. See, there's a little curve that repeats itself. It really shows up better on the camera than it does live. Again, you've got this repetitive. And when you puff that up, then you're going to have this on the side when you fill that in then you get a secondary design pull it out there we go see that goes all the way around oh, look at that yeah that's the fun part there's these this is another one that's just random pieces but when it puffs up it's fun you little get to birdies. see little birdies here's another one but you can see how i fussy cut them so that the parts are matching in a fun way and you've got the center that's kind of got a design going to it same with this one i like the hand i like the hand too here's another one with the leaves going but there's a tulip on this so see there's your tulip oh i like that yeah so the question is what's the top what's the bottom you know that's a personal preference i suppose here's another one look at the heart i love that i do too and but look at what the secondary design isn't that fun and I think that's the fun part of making these is finding the pattern that's created in just a simple hexagon if you get the right fabric. Okay, here's another here's another flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> now see I centered those and then these around it are just kind of random. So that's the focus. And that's just a random piece to fill the bottom. But this it's a great scrap buster. I've specifically, Ooh. isn't that fun? I've specifically wow. tried to make this using all scraps. Who's that one for? I don't know. They're going to get to pick. I guess that'll be the hard part. Wow. Who gets to pick which one? But I see think the, they'll be trading. You think they'll yeah. be trading? I'll just pass them out and then they can fuss. Look at this one. They that can one. fuss over your fussy cutting. They can fuss over the fussy cutting. And then these. Now these didn't line up. Now see how this one's not quite as good as that one. I'm going to show you I've solved that problem. I could do that better. I might have to remake that one and just, you know, that'll be a trash one. Then here's another one. Lines are really fun to work with because they give you some unique patterns. So I've got a few more cut and then I've got a few more to cut yet. So let me just show you how this works. Um, when I'm cutting, let me find my pieces and my parts. The good thing is everything's in here. The bad thing is I need file tabs to figure it out. <laughs> so here's my here's my hexagon cut. That's a one inch hexagon. That is the like the the Bible <laughs> for cutting out of fabric. It's just one inch hexagons are the beginning of English paper piecing, and I think they'll always be the one you always use forever. But what I made to go with mine is what I call a little peeky boo template. So what I did was I placed this on a piece of cardboard and I traced it. 
And then I cut where my seam is, where because it rolls over so the paper fits in here. And that's actually what you get when you cut it out. So I'm looking at a piece of fabric, and let's say I'm auditioning this piece of fabric. And this is some Tula, we've got this in the store. This is her tiny beast. And why I love Tula's fabric for English paper piecing is she's an English paper piecer. So she gets why these repetitive patterns mm. are so helpful when doing things. That's how you get, like in this one, when I got this fun design, this kaleidoscope thing going on, that happens because it's a repetitive piece of fabric. This piece of fabric is lovely. I love this piece of fabric, but it doesn't have a repetitive design that when I cut it up, it's gonna do this kind of patterning. It's gonna be more of a random one, which is okay. That's not a bad thing. I mean, I love this. Somebody gave it to me because they want me to make their pin cushion out of this, which I will. Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> but repetitive pieces like this are what give you this unique kaleidoscope effect. But to find that, what I have to do is kind of look at what I'm doing. So that's why I made this little template and I call it my little looky-loo. And I can move around and find just what's gonna be in the piece I wanna cut. And I can also make sure that the design is going the right way with the hexagons. Because, let me show you on this, this is a little busy. So these are the ones that I cut that I'm gonna to use to make the next pin cushion. Okay, and I cut it with the flower going that way because when I, when you bend that piece and put it together, I'm gonna to get a nice design on the side mm. and on the other side. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta kind of bend it and go, okay, oh, how is this gonna flow? look at that little ring right there. Yeah, it's gonna make a ring. Now that's probably gonna be in the, in the, inside the um, oh in the seam in the seam right, but right, that's okay because right. another ring is going to come out something of it else something else will it. come out and then there's my center now that's all the ones i cut this is the one that's cut differently and i want you to look real close this is going to be i hope people can see this so if you look this point is on the flat okay but this point is on a point so when this, when I do them this way, they don't make as pretty of a scallop as they do this way, in my opinion. So what I'm saying is, see the hexagon, the way the hexagon lays? These, when they go together in a scallop, in a circle, aren't gonna make the same design as these will. Mm -hmm. So that's why you wanna audition with this, and then you wanna fold it in half and say, okay, what's that gonna do when it goes together? See the half of that versus the half of this, this gives me more interesting swirls than this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I created this out of this template just so I could audition things because I don't always see what I want looking through this. I can't always see exactly where I'm gonna land. So I do this so I can find the piece that I wanna use to make my whole turnout. I right. love that fabric. There's so many good shapes to cut out. Oh my gosh. This this is going to be a gazillion pieces to make out mm. of this. And okay. that orange in there. That, that I know. fiery Isn't that orange. fun? And I picked this and I put the dot in the center. So see, my dot will be dead on center. Uh -huh. and for a target for your pins. For the target for the pins. And so that's, that's going to be a pin cushion. That'll be another one. Now here's another piece of fabric that lends itself beautifully. Now, again, it's repetitive. Ooh. So, and you can see I've cut, you know, you get Swiss cheese when you cut these out. You get these little, but you're not going to, I'm not throwing that away because the next one, I'm going to need that little chunk right there. So this is like the queen of, of keeping scraps. But you can see I started cutting them out with this one. And I cut this piece first. And I just, it didn't have, when I folded it in half and looked at it, it just didn't have quite as much fun going on but look when you fold this one in half wow see the dimension i'm going to get out of that one so you're probably saying go ahead and cut one fold it in half yeah. see what it does and then see if you want to continue with see that see if you want to play keep playing in that direction because you just don't know until you play with them what you're going to get there yeah there you got to find the pattern so yeah, it, it takes a little playing with
putting them together. And sometimes looking at the whole piece doesn't really give you what you want to see. Because you can't tell what it's going to do. You can't tell what it's going to do. Yeah, you can't tell. Because this thing's three-dimensional. It's folded. Right, it is. These pin cushions are three-dimensional. And I, you know, we're just talking a pin cushion here, but I've become almost obsessed with how to get them to turn out the way I want them. Let's see, that's the three. There. Yeah, I see what there you're, it is. I see what you're doing right there. See, so when you look at this piece, it's it's it is symmetrical, but th this has more little dots than this spot. So I got to make sure these all match. That these go towards the center. Yes. And then these are the connecting. Right. Going like whoosh, around it. And so when that's folded, this is going to make a nice little like this one did. See how I get that fun little point all the way around? Yeah. This is going to do the same thing. And, and that's just going to be stunning. I'll probably put a color in the center of that. Or I might even just use this one for the center. You know, I, I cut that odd one. I remember one of the first ones you did was black and white, something along these lines, and yeah. it had that pop of color in there. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there it is. I think that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a little bit of red right there. This one's this one's kind of been through the, through the ringer. But they hold up great. I mean, this is just proof. Um... When you do your stitches, you want to keep them fairly tight because of that, that walnut shell stuff is kind of, I have a little bit of it in here. I could probably actually, here's a, here's a thing of it. So this, okay, this is, this is, this is walnut shells. They're Don't crushed walnut shells. There, I know, I, I've used them <laughs> a lot. busy. See, I've even got some more ready here to go together. So I've picked some more that I've auditioned to. To oh, I like again. how you organized them. So, yeah. like, you have a bunch of them clipped, and then... They're ready to go. You can take them wherever yeah. and sew so, them together. So, here's one that's going to come together. And that's exactly it. That's I can so just cool. sit and sew these when I need to. So, here's my top and bottom, because there's a flamingo in there. And then these little dancing girls. My son always called them dancing girls. So, see, this one's going to make a really fun pattern when you sew when I sew it together. See the ring starting? Mm -hmm. This will be fun. This will be a good one. So yeah, I mean it's 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 addicting, man. You make I thought initially I was like, oh, I'll never be able to make twenty five pin cushions. That's gonna take me forever. <laughs> oh, what little did I know? So that's gonna be one. And then here's I was I got making them and then I got so many made. So there's the center. Or no, this is the this is the center. So these this one's gonna be fun too. Look how this line. So here's another piece of fabric. I was attracted to this aqua line because I thought ooh that'd be perfect that's going to go nicely around that edge and it's so funny now when I look at fabric I start looking at it dimensionally how is it going to change when I cut a chunk out of it as, instead of how it was made look how fun that one's going to be and then this one I put that's sunshine so in the middle oh that's cool isn't that fun and then the bottom's the same so the other thing that I've learned is when you're sewing these together, having a bottom that is different than your sides makes it much easier to figure out where you are in the process. Because when you start sewing these together, it can be confusing if they're all the same one. But if I know there's my top and there's my bottom, then I can sew around the bottom. I go up one side like this and across the top to connect the, the top or the bottom I mean they could be inverted either way and then I start sewing like here and that paper's come out when it shouldn't have and down and then I'll put this one on and go here and down and then I'll put this one on and go here and down and I put that one on and go here and down and so then I just work my way around to the open one and it, it I can do this one of these in about an hour and a half I can sew it all together because it, it just, I've got a routine now and it's really easy to do. Okay, so let's talk about filling them up. Um, I typically have, when I fill them, let's, and I meant to bring my little, I, I went to Walmart, Kroger somewhere, and bought the little sieves, you know, the little, it's not a sieve, that's funnel. what the word, funnel, that's the word, funnel. <laughs> sieve is the thing you shake it. We all, I can sew, I'm not a flower good sieve. Cook. A flower sifter, no. But you can put that little funnel down in the hole here so I can put my funnel in that hole that I've left because I've sewn all the way around. And then this stuff just very easily 
like I'll put it usually in one of these, I can pour it in that funnel and it just fills, 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 fills. And that's, that's right the easiest the way to do it. And you want it fairly, I mean, this is pretty full. Um, it's, it's, I've done them loose, but I mean, I can push on that and it kind of fills every place out. Um, you don't want them too thin. Now, you don't have to put, this is, this is literally, crushed walnuts are lizard litter. <laughs> you go to the pet store and you can buy a, I don't know, I think it's five or 10 pounds, some big bag full of it, which is, we go through them here at the store. We actually sell these in little packages, but you can go to the pet store and buy a great big bag of it if you want. Um, if you're going to do a lot of these, if you're not going to do a lot, it makes more sense to just buy a little bag from us. But um, you don't have to put this in here. I, people can put like steel wool in them because that's going to help sharpen your needles. You could put fiber fill in it if you just wanted something like. I just like something with some heft to it. So when I set it on my, on the edge of my table, it stays. You know, it, it has some support there. Um, and one of the reasons I didn't get these all done because I'm debating whether they get ribbons or not. Mm. <laughs> um, I may just buy multicolored ribbon and just tie a little ribbon. Or, and that's real easy to do, sew a little ribbon. You just take the piece and sew it into here before you fill it, and then fill it, and then when you sew that together, the ribbon's just hanging out of that one, that one side. But not everybody wants it. I mean, I can see you not wanting the ribbon on it. Some people would. But I like it for my clips. Okay, let's do a ladder stitch. Have you ever done a ladder stitch? No. Okay. No, at least not that I'm aware of. <laughs> okay, let's do a ladder stitch. So I'm gonna go in my handy, everything's here. I got my papers, I got my um, magnets. magnets. These are like, and the the, uh, the hexagons you can see, I use them again and again and again. Don't be afraid to fold them. See how folded these are? I mean, they're all folded and twisted. The papers don't care that they're folded and twisted. They really don't. And they still reuse again and again. Eventually, it gets past the point where you want to use it. But, I mean, see how many times these have been glued and re-glued, and they work beautifully. So, people are like, oh, I'll just make my own papers. As many times as I use this piece of paper, I am not cutting out hexagons. I am not in that groove. Okay. So, let me just show you some of my fun little tools and how I organize. So... I have my glue pen because, you know, that's how you put your hexagons together. You have to watch the other video to see that. I've got my small rotary cutter because I like this little one because I can really get around things. Um, I have a seam ripper because, unfortunately, we do have to rip things out. I'm in the process right now. If you've watched my bloomers series, I'm ripping out bloomers. I did a lot of bloomers, and I kind of didn't didn't love the way the pattern was going to put it together in one big thing. I got bored with it because I get bored super simply and I got another idea. So we'll have something, what I'm going to do with that later. I think it's going to turn out cool, but I got to get enough of it stitched and I've been working on these. So, um, anyway, but you do need a seam ripper in your little box. This is my thread conditioner. Um, this is the kind my mom always carried. It's basically just beeswax in there. Um, and we have beeswax and thread conditioners. I truly believe in that. And then this, you know, the little Altoids tin has my needles and my little thimbles in it that are my favorite little thimble. Oh, I love it. Yeah, these are my little thimbles. It's your little sewing survival tin. It's, it is, it, and it keeps it all together for me. I think that's yeah. the one with the sticky part on it. No, where my sticky one is. Let me get it and put it on my finger so I can sew. Okay, see it's got the little adhesion thing on there. And I just use that again and again. It sticks right there on my finger. And I've got whatever needle I happen to be using that day. I try to pull these out. Check them because they get bent. You know, we want to put it on the table and make sure it stays nice and flat. If it's bent, you're gonna, that's how you're going to find out. It, and, or sometimes you can actually see it. They're so bent. And I've got a couple straight pins. And, you know, just, you know how these things are like pocketbooks. They get full of stuff. And then I got my little scissors with my little fob so I can find them. And I have to keep these blocked up because my cats try to take it. And you have a video on how to make that too. I do. Key fob. I do. We have the, these are so fun. These are little peyote beading. This is the funnest thing to do. Um, it's funny. I won't do cross stitch, but I'll do this stuff. There's a thread tangled up in it. I need to get out of there. Oh, I love oh. that. Okay. So to do a ladder stitch, actually I can use this very thread. And I won't even have to re-thread and do all that. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Let's cut the end off of it. So I'm going to show you how to do a ladder stitch. 
because that's the best way to close this seam. So we're gonna pretend it's full of the walnut shells. And let me just tell you, they're a little bit messy when you get ready to do this. I typically put like a, a um, I have a uh, fabric, um, Oh, well, it's not a Kleenex, it's a... Muslin. <laughs> Muslin. Yeah, just like a piece of fabric. Just take a... a paper towel. It's paper towel. White, paper towel doesn't do as well, but just a oh. white piece of fabric is good. Um, <laughs> it's a, good a napkin. Use, it's a good use for that cone of cotton. <laughs> that cone of cotton. There you go. There's something to do with cone of cotton. Okay, <laughs> so when I do these, unlike the knotty knot that I showed you in my previous videos, I'm going to do a quilter's knot, which is where you wrap it around the needle and you just pull that down and that makes your knot at the end of your thread. And that's an old quilter's knot that's been around forever. Um, and that gives me a knot at the end of my thread. Now I'm using 80 weight thread, I'm using very fine thread. So that makes a pretty small knot, so I'm probably gonna put my needle right back on that same little bitty knot and go around two or three times and do another knot right there. Just to get it enough of a knot that it will secure itself through the fabric. See my knot? Barely. Barely, yeah. <laughs> See, there's just barely a little no, bitty dot. Okay, and then I'm going to come in from the back side of my fabric so that that knot is hidden inside the seam. Now, doing this with the walnut shells in there is a little interesting. But now, my thread is on top. You know, I should have used this in another color. Let me find something that this thread will contrast against. That way, it'll really show better. What do you think, Peter? Yeah because you can't really see it against that. Let's pick one of these other ones. You know, we just got a dozen to pick from here. How's that? Is that better? Sure. Okay. So I'm gonna go back again. You get to see this knot again. So you just wrap that around the end of your thread and pull it down, make my knot. And I'll do another one. That's that quilter's knot. My grandmother taught me that knot, I think. That's just the one they use for years. Okay, so I come in from the back of my fabric, so I kind of pick it up and go underneath, and I'm in the seam. Can you see how I'm in the seam? Yep. All right, and I'm pulling that through, and then that way that knot is hidden down inside my stitching. Now, <laughs> this is gonna be fun to try and show you. A ladder stitch, you come up one side, and think of it like a ladder. I'm gonna go right in the edge of that seam, just the littlest stitch, okay? I'm gonna pull it all the way out so you can see. Oh, great, my thread's out. <laughs> Isn't that Murphy's Law? Now you guys can watch to see if I can thread this in two seconds flat. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so here's the trick. When your needle, when your thread won't go through the eye of the needle, sometimes you need a new straight edge which I would guess I do on this thread. It's probably been floating around. Oh, look at that. Right in, right in there. And it's because I gave it a new edge. Okay, we'll just blame that on that. Okay, I got it good and tight. Now, so I go up one side and it's just like a ladder. And I'm gonna pull that through. And I should have little crossbars and then I come over to this side, and I just barely want to be in the edge of that, almost underneath it. And I go up. Just the littlest bit. So there's a crossbar. Yeah, you can really see that. Can you see it? Okay. And then I come and I do another one in this side, and up just the littlest bit. And there's another crossbar. So see, there's a line and there's a line. I probably should do these closer together, but just for what we're doing, I just want you to see. And then I do, I, if I was really doing this, I would do it closer together. You but would take smaller bites. I would take smaller bites, but, but I want you to see it. on camera. Yeah, I want you to see it. And there's another crossbar. So see my lines? And they're and, straight, you're keeping them straight across. Yes, yes. And I'm going inside that little seam and across. Now, I would go all the way to the end with this, and see, you can see my lines, and then when I get to the end, I just do a tug. See how it pulled it together? Yeah. That's a ladder stitch. Now, this one I didn't get quite up inside enough, because you can see it right there, but that's a ladder stitch, and it's an invisible stitch that you do from the finished side of something.
I would do that all the way to the end and then I would make a knot and I would come back through and bury that knot. Okay, that's how I'm gonna close all the seams on these so that they're invisible. Now, like I said, when you have that, this stuff inside of there, it can be a little interesting, but, but because this is a fairly flat stitch and you don't have to move stuff around a whole lot, it does keep that from spilling out everywhere. But as I said, I usually put something on my lap because I know at the end of the day- I'm A tea towel. A tea towel, there you go, or a, a napkin. That's the word I was trying a to use, like a dinner napkin. A like dinner a cloth napkin. dinner napkin. That's the perfect Your neighbor's thing. dinner napkin. Your neighbor's dinner napkin, yeah. <laughs> you don't want those shells everywhere. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the rest of, we've done, we've sold this kit like crazy. Um, People love it. It's a great introduction to English paper piecing. Honestly, I've made enough of these now. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be fun to sew these together? Because, you know, I'm crazy like that. And just make a quilt. Would that not be so fun? Oh, wow. Just to have yeah, it just would. hundreds. And, and it would be, it's like quilt as you go. It because is. Both you just sides fill are it with done. A little piece of batting. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't even have to fill it with it's batting. It's reversible. It's yeah. You. I mean, and then just sew all these together, and you're done. It's. It really is quilt as you go. So, I don't know. That may be the <laughs> because I'm addicted to making these dumb things. I may just have to start just making them, knowing that eventually I'll sew them all together and make like an afghan out of them. How fun would that be? That would be amazing. Wouldn't that be awesome? So anyway, there's your tricks. Take a piece of cardboard, cut a hole in it, make it match your template. It's, it is, this is really helpful when auditioning. I love this. Um, don't be shy. Have fun. There's no mistakes. Embrace what you do. Enjoy the art of it. Some of these turned out better than others. I don't care. I'm still, somebody's going to get one for Christmas. <laughs> and they'll be thrilled to get it. But anyway, I think that's all. What did I not talk about? Can you... Did Lynn give you her fabric? No, Lenine hasn't. Because Lenine I mean, likes that, uh, um, yeah, she's got her favorites. She's got her favorites. And, and so this is kind of the downfall to what I've done is that 25 people, obviously, they're not all going to have the same favorites I do. They're going to get my, these are my favorite fabrics because I used my scraps. I didn't really want to um, invest in buying more fabric because if you ever saw my fabric room, I've got plenty of fabric. And certainly these little pieces, a fat quarter, you could probably make four or five out of a fat quarter. Um, but watch your repeat. But, you know, if you're looking at fabrics like these, you know, uh, watch how close your repeat is. Because if it's a big repeat, obviously that's not going to work for this anyway. So you want something that has a very small repeat, and then a fat quarter is going to do it for sure. Um, even probably, well, yeah, you could probably even get away with an eighth of a yard. You know, just because you just don't need that much. Except you want to be sure you get all of the pattern. And like this, sometimes I had to go in a little bit to be sure I got everything. So just if you're going to buy a little bit of fabric to make these, be sure you get a big enough piece that it'll repeat the way you want. But these kind of fabrics are your best choice. Um, so anyway, thanks. I hope you had fun watching. We love having you around. And we'll be around next time. Happy stitching.